This is News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell and Missy Fuller. News 25, local news you can count on. News is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Call 727-9900 today for your free consultation. If you need a lawyer, you need Nelson. We hope everyone had a fantastic weekend. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. I'm Missy Kohler, and today is June 21st. Well, a rear end collision today sent one person to Desert View Hospital. One person was complaining of chest pain following a two-vehicle rear end collision that occurred this morning near 800 East Basin Avenue. That person was transported via Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescued Ground Ambulance to Desert View Hospital. Traffic was temporarily blocked in both directions by the Nye County Sheriff's Auxiliary Unit during the cleanup and investigation of the accident scene by the Nye County Sheriff's Office Department's Traffic Division. Both vehicles involved sustained moderate to major damage. Police and medics were dispatched to a second crash today, this one on South Highway 160. Nevada Highway Patrol is conducting the investigation into the cause of a single vehicle crash on South Highway 160 in Oski that occurred this morning in the desert on the northbound side of the highway. Both occupants declined to be transported to local medical facilities at the time of the crash by Pahrump Valley Farm Rescue. The Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies and traffic division, along with auxiliary units, were at the scene of the crash and diverted traffic around the accident scene. And a local woman is arrested for two separate incidents just days apart. Deputies were dispatched to a Pahrump address for a report of a burglary. During the investigation, it was determined that the suspect was Leah Armendariz, based on witness testimony. Sheriff's personnel conducted a search of Armendariz's purse and found a stolen Social Security card. When questioned, Armendariz could not provide a reason for having the card. A burglary report was generated on May 23rd in Pahrump in which various items were stolen to include personal identifying documents. On May 28th, law enforcement responded to a residential burglary in Pahrump. When speaking to the reporting party, he advised that when walking into the residence in question, he observed a dark silver Ford Mustang that did not belong there. He recognized a female exiting his residence with property and appearing to load it into the Mustang. The suspect was identified as Leah Armendariz. When he confronted her, she dropped the property she was carrying and left in the Mustang with a Hispanic male driver. Armendariz was located a short distance away at a local bar. When questioned, she denied any involvement but did admit to being dropped off at the bar a short time before police contacted her. Leah Armendariz was then placed under arrest for possession of stolen property and residential burglary. And we'll be right back with more News 25. You're watching News 25, the most recognized and farthest reaching local news in Nye County. News 25, local news you can count on. And welcome back. Questions remain about the future of Lordstown Motors, a company that makes a key ingredient in COVID vaccines is sold, and Alaska Airlines is adding new routes. Angela Miles has the details. Tapping our news. Electric truck maker Lordstown Motors is stalling out again. Earlier, the company executive said it was on the road to getting trucks onto the market in late September, and it had enough money to keep production going through 2022. That statement was not accurate. Instead, Lordstown does have a significant indication of demand for its endurance electric trucks, but no firm orders. The company continues to get questions about its ability to stay in business. All Devron, a biotech company based in Fargo, North Dakota, that has been at the center of making an important ingredient for COVID-19 vaccines has just been sold. And as more Americans take to the skies, Alaska Airlines is launching daily nonstop routes that include Boise, Chicago, and Austin. Alaska Airlines reports strong bookings through the summer Thanks so much, Angela. Well, the Board of County Commissioners recently looked into amending the Nye County Code in an effort to protect renters from discrimination because of the COVID-19 pandemic. There was a lot of discussion on this topic among the commissioners. I look at this and I say, what does that look like? You know, Clark County passed something very similar and renters in our community here in Pahrump specifically, I would assume in Tonopah as well, they're probably very well affected that you can discriminate against a variety of things, source of income, 
for example, um, if you're if you don't oh. pay, you got evicted. So that makes sense, right? Right. Um, right. But during the pandemic, what if you were what if you were evicted for whatever for whatever reason? So I don't want the pandemic to be another uh, another source to discriminate someone uh, due to an eviction. So there is a lot of help out there when it comes to COVID and people getting their rent paid for for over a year now they've had their rent paid for um, through hhs uh, which we do as a county Carbone. i i understand to some degree where the commissioner is going he's looking to put something in place when we have the same situation come about where we have this dilemma where things were happening to people uh, they're being evicted because they weren't making payment and, uh, you know, the government stepped in and said, you know, you can't do that. It would be nice, I guess, is where, where the commissioner is coming from, is let's step up and do something in front of that so when this does happen again, or if it does happen again, or it doesn't happen again, but it does, because we do have issues, that we don't have the problem again. So we don't have to jump through hoops to make things happen. Have things pre-staged, sitting on the shelf, ready to be picked, ready to be moved forward. Just to clarify, during COVID, Landlords were not allowed to evict anybody during COVID. As a matter of fact, there's a flip side to this as far as discrimination. And uh, there were renters that, that didn't pay uh, any utilities, any rent for over a year, and then <clears throat> decided to just pack it up and leave in the middle of the night and left the landlords high and dry uh, with incurring costs of over a year of rent, utilities, because they, the landlords were not allowed to shut down and not pay for utilities that would be included uh, in their rent. So there is a flip side to this, and I just wanted to share that as well. We have a property management company, and in doing so, I've had owners waive um, tenants having to pay, but they still had to make the payment on their house. They still had to pay the insurance on their house. You know, the state has told everyone they don't need to pay their rent. And so everybody got waived. Now everybody's gonna get evicted and everybody's not gonna be able to qualify for another home to rent, to buy, or otherwise. We've got a big problem. And so the state has already created that mess. And for us to step in as a county and say, oh, it doesn't matter owners, you should just eat it some more. I just, I have a trouble supporting that. And I appreciate that you've brought it forward for discussion, Commissioner Blundo. I, I wholeheartedly hear you. Um, there, there has been a tremendous amount of help. I just wanted to have some safeguards and protections. And in the end, the board decided that Commissioner Blundo would work with the county manager to draft an amended code. The comments of the commissioners would be taken into consideration when drafting the proposed change, and it would be brought back before the board for further discussion. The state of Nevada is ready to award $5 million in cash and prizes for a chance to win. All you have to do is get your COVID-19 vaccination. The state is announcing a new public health initiative called Vax Nevada Days. The Department of Health and Human Services, in partnership with Immunize Nevada, will give away $5 million in cash and prizes to nearly 2,000 Nevada residents who have initiated the COVID-19 vaccine process. Every Nevadan 12 and older who's had at least one dose of a COVID-19 vaccine will be automatically entered into the drawings. Those drawings will be held every Thursday starting July 8th and running through August 26th when someone will win the million-dollar grand prize. There are plenty of other smaller prizes up for grabs, too, including 149 cash prizes ranging from $1,000 to $250,000, 135 college savings accounts for post-secondary education ranging from $5,000 to $50,000, Nevada State Park annual entrance permits, and Nevada fishing licenses. Governor Steve Sislak says while we're making progress with more than 50 percent of our eligible residents at least partially vaccinated, we must do more to protect our state. And this incentive promotion is our way to give vaccination efforts an extra boost and encourage all Nevadans to get their shot so our state can recover and build back stronger. For more information, including complete rules, just visit VaxNevadaDays.org. And we'll be right back. We've got more News 25 on the way, so stay with us. You're watching News 25, brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. News 25, local news you can count on. 
Welcome back. Well, a new mental health treatment facility is celebrating its grand opening right here in Prompt. New Focus Counseling Center of Nevada is ready to serve Valley residents with a variety of mental health services. New Focus Counseling Center is an agency that provides affordable, evidence-based mental health services. So we're really excited to go out to this community that's growing and be able to provide those services out here. Especially considering the, the current pandemic that we have, there's a, going to be a growing need for these services, and we want to be able to meet that need here. We have a very diverse, well-trained, staff uh, dedicated to providing exceptional services to the community. We offer individual therapy, we offer rehabilitative mental health services, we offer uh, group therapy, family therapy, and we also provide transportation. We focus on specific client care. We want to make sure that our treatment plans are client specific. Uh, we do not believe in a one-size-fits-all approach to treatment. So we work in collaboration with the client and in some cases their families to make sure that we're creating a treatment plan that's effective. We treat uh, trauma. We, we are a trauma-informed facility, so we specialize in trauma and we, we specialize in behavioral disorders like ADHD and so forth. Well, New Focus Counseling Center of Nevada is located at 1601 East Basin Avenue. They're also on Facebook at New Focus Counseling Center. For around VFW Post 10054 is sporting a new look these days. The post was selected to appear on the TV show Bar Rescue, seen on the Paramount Network. The Bar Rescue team gave the facility a makeover, and Post Commander Marty Aguiar says they're thrilled with the results. Bar Rescue actually contacted us about eight months ago and uh, asked us if we were interested in doing a, an interview process uh, to, to basically see if we wanted to be selected. Um, we knew that they were staying local in, in Las Vegas and they basically asked us if we wanted to be part of the show. Did you, you guys didn't submit? Nope, we didn't submit. They, they actually contacted us. They obviously laid down new paint. We had an interior decorator come in and they basically hung up all of our memorabilia. It looks better the way they did it. Um, they brought in new tables and chairs and bar stools. Uh, they put in chandeliers in the, in the meeting hall. They put in um, new chairs in, in the dining hall and, and that type of stuff. So we're not dealing with folding chairs anymore. So we actually have really comfortable seating. Yeah. Um, they assisted us with rehabbing our back porch that we had just finished. Uh, so that's now a game room. We've got a pool table, foosball table. We're going to have dartboards out there. They presented us with a new smoker that we utilized for smoking uh, brisket and chicken and all that other stuff. And then they gave us all new chairs for the outside area as well. They didn't do anything with the actual bar. Uh, obviously, they um, took the aluminum cooler and put a U.S. flag on it, which is absolutely gorgeous, and we love it. They resealed the bar top, but that was basically it, and, and did some painting. It was very interesting. Uh, what you see on the show versus what you um, actually go through in order for them to get that half hour program, yeah. you're, they're, they're filming like hours and hours and hours of, of taping. Yeah. You know, I'm sure that 99% of that's gonna wind up on the cutting floor, um, but you know, it, it, was, it was very interesting. Yeah. And, and you know, the, the hardest part about it is I had to give up the keys to this building for three days mm -hmm. and not be here. Oh, yeah? Yeah, they would not let us anywhere near the building while they were doing the, the, the renovation. You know, when they say 36-hour renovation, they're not kidding. It is 36 hours. Wow. You know, from the night that the stress test is done, we hand over the keys and they kick us out. Yeah. And we walked back in not knowing ex exactly what we were walking into. Yeah. But we're really, really happy with what they've done. Well, many of us spent Sunday celebrating Father's Day, and it was especially sweet for one new dad who feared he'd never father a child due to male infertility. Erica Foreman has more on how he beat the odds for his baby boy. You have to take a step back and realize just how much of a miracle he really is. Two years ago, Eric and Brienne Elves were told conceiving a child was against the odds. When you're told that there's a possibility that you don't have sperm, there's a possibility you're not going to have a child, um, you sort of feel um, the shame. Hear about um, 
you know, shooting blanks or people joking about it. And I didn't know it was a real thing. Eric was diagnosed with azospermia, a condition causing male infertility. After meeting with several specialists, Cleveland Clinic urologist Dr. Neil Parekh offered hope. All the studies and literature show that, you know, infertility is a couple's disease. 50% uh, of the time, there is male factor uh, involved in infertility. So it's not only the female side. After a year of testing and trying medications, the couple opted for a surgical solution called microtessy. They go into the testicles, they pull tissues, and then they will look under a microscope and hope to find sperm. While Eric was in surgery, Brienne underwent an egg retrieval down the hall. I was being wheeled over to go wait for Eric in the waiting room. Dr. Parekh actually stopped me in the hallway to tell me that they had found sperm. So it was a really, really exciting time. Um, I will never forget that moment. Four months later, an embryo was transferred into Brienne's uterus, and then the best birthday gift Eric could ever imagine. I was hoping to be able to give him a positive test for a gift, and it worked out. We realized you know, what we were dreaming of was going to happen. Baby Noah is now seven months old. His parents say he's an easy baby, but admit bringing him into the world wasn't. I will be the first to tell you that it's not easy but I will also be the first to tell you that it's worth it, 100% worth it. The journey seems long and it's going to be a while, you know, don't give up. I would do it all over again um, if it meant I have my son. At Cleveland Clinic, I'm Erica Foreman. Well, we hope all the fathers had a wonderful Father's Day yesterday. The CDC estimates about 9% of men in the United States are infertile. Dr. Parrick adds that infertility in general is rising globally. He encourages couples to talk to their doctors or seek out a specialist if they're struggling to conceive. For today's Save a Pet, we go back to Desert Haven Animal Society where Darby O'Donnell introduces us to Estrella. Hi, I'm Darby here at Desert Haven Animal Society and today we are joined with Estrella. Estrella is a one-year-old German Shepherd mix. Beautiful little girly. Um, she has a, a cute little white mark that goes up the middle of her head. Um, she kind of has some beige reddish coloring. Super sweet with a little gray nose. Um, so sweet. She's just a little fearful of her new surroundings and that's okay. So if you want to come and see Estrella or any of her friends here at Desert Haven Animal Society, you can give them a call ahead of time to make an appointment. 775-751-7020 or you can look them up on their Facebook page at Desert Haven Animal Society. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Lerner and Row Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. John Kohler staring out the KPVM weather window. Wave your trees in the air like you just don't care. It's a windy day in Pahrump. It's the longest day of the year. Welcome to summer solstice. Hot temperatures. We'll tell you all about the weather coming up. News 25 Weather is brought to you by... Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee. The dollop of sour cream on your burrito. The melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious. Undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hi, good evening, Nevada. It's John Kohler from the KPVM Channel 25 Weather Studios. Happy summer solstice. It's the official start of summer, the longest days of the year, the next couple, three days. And then uh, it's the return tonight. So uh, we'll be tracking that as we lose daylight and uh, maybe some of these uh, high temperatures as we're experiencing all up and down the state. Look at that uh, Fernley Fallon, Carson City, actually pretty pleasant today at 92 degrees. All the way down to Goldfield, it's uh, 95 to 101 degrees. And that's in the nice cool part of the state. You get down to Beatty, 104 degrees, oh gosh. Uh, Amargosa, you're sitting at 108. Las Vegas, all the way up to 109 today. In Death Valley, 120 degrees. Here in the Paradise of Prump, well, let's take a look. How about 104? It's a dry heat. I don't know quite what to say. It's, uh, it was 106 earlier. South, south, westerly winds uh, buffeting us at about 20 miles per hour. And they'll continue into the evening. Uh, this morning, uh, sun rose at 526 a.m. And if you're facing the day, uh, you can stop that at about 8.04 tonight. It'll be nice. And I'll uh, return tonight. Southeasterly winds at 19 miles per hour. Clear tonight, but it's going to be clouding up as we head into tomorrow. The next day, we've got a couple clouds on the horizon. Winds up to uh, 17 miles per hour tomorrow, but dying out for the rest of the week down to, you know, 
10 miles per hour, sub 10 miles per hour. Actually going to be pretty uh, fabulous on Wednesday, 92 degrees under cloudy skies. Might even see a spattering of rain. Clear skies for the rest of the week uh, heading into uh, Sunday, Monday. Well, uh, it'll cloud up a little bit. Those temperatures returning to trim at about 108 degrees for uh, high mark. It's things to look forward to. All right, get a big glass of iced tea and we'll bear down and enjoy it. Uh, enjoy that uh, longest day of the year. And back to the desk, it's Missy Indiana. So we hope John had a wonderful Father's Day. I think he did. He did. You had some fun though, huh? Yeah, I had fun too. Yeah, you took, did. Took Greg out and, and took him to two different meals. It was yeah. fun. Yeah. Was oh, fun. I bet that made him We hope happy. everybody else had a wonderful yeah. Father's Day as well. I got this really cute little message from my friend, um, uh, wishing me Happy Father's Day being a single parent. And so I, you could celebrate both Mother's Day and Father's Day. Well, I never even thought about that before. Mm. And you know what the thing is, is it just made me cry because I was so <laughs> sad. And I was like, that's very sweet. And um, so Happy Father's Day to all the different kinds of dads, which are even moms and dads of um, animals and, and um, you know, moms and dads of animals and um, everybody who you know, definitely helped raise those beautiful children that we have. Well, we'll see you back here tomorrow night. I'm Deanna. I'm Missy. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.